make sure. You know no, exactly no, what no. We're getting. The shaded levels aren't aren't a completion schematic. Uh, you're getting the entire upper level, which is for elections. Okay. And then when you go to the lower level, we're going to flesh out um, the sheriff. And, and quite frankly, the drawing that you have isn't accurate. The sheriff's going to be a little bit bigger than that okay. once we're done. Uh, <clears throat> the IT room will be ready to go except for the equipment, which is what we'll be searching for. Okay. Uh, and then emergency management, it's drawn, but we'll have to find the money somewhere. And the meeting room? Where's uh, that? I'm trying to see if Zach showed up. That, oh, oh, there, there, there he is. <laughs> Zach, the meeting room. Th this is Z Zach. If you can come up here. Yeah. This is Zach Sneeden with HTK Architects. Hey, Zach. Hey, hi. Um, you're asking about that meeting room. Mm -hmm. I believe it is in the um, and Dan Elwell from Shirley Construction, the contractor. Um, it is in the. Uh, it is in that budget that Rich presented. Okay. So we're getting some of that lower level finished. Correct. Then. Yeah, and, and the um, the restrooms will be finished out. Um, okay. Is your plan colored? Uh huh. Um, the light blue areas. Um, the restroom. Is the uh, or that kind of light lighter blue areas the emergency management that would not be oh, okay. in the budget. Um, and then the IT room, as Rich said, is will be the room will be there, but not the equipment. Okay, but on the lower level, that county meeting room for training and everything of poll workers, that will be Correct, included. yes. And the restrooms on the lower level? Correct. We'll okay. Be, yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Thanks. But the, the space for the IT is for redundancy, is that correct? Is that I believe part of the plan? Part mm -hmm. of, yeah, part of a long-range plan, a little bit longer-range okay. to, okay. to do with the building. All right. I mean, there will be some IT that's associated with the elections function, but the, the main server areas in there were for redundancy. Right. Great. So, if I may, yes. So for me, what, what we're doing is we're uh, getting additional space to uh, mitigate risk of data <laughs> failure for Shawnee County in the long run. Uh, we're providing an opportunity for better customer service in the new facility. and. We don't have to pay rent anymore, and that offsets a lot of the, the debt service that we had. So it, it's, taxpayers should know it's a good deal. We're, we're paying in excess of $90,000 a year in rent, and we're going to save that money. Uh, additionally, when we get fiber strung out there, we're going to see additional savings, uh, and, and Pat Oblander can speak to this, and he was telling me this last week, uh, on the cost of the T1 lines that we pay. So when we get the fiber strung out there, which is a different project, uh, we'll, we'll have even more savings on that. Yeah. Right. The, but, but the point, point is, anytime we spend money like this, we need to tell the taxpayers it's a good deal. And I think in the bottom line, this is a good deal. Yes. Okay. And yes, Commissioner Cook. Commissioner, I would uh, hope to point out that the running the fiber lines, running the computer lines from the courthouse to the Van Buren building, that is not part of this budget. Correct. And so that would be an additional cost that we'll have to factor in probably in our budget during the or July perhaps August. the next COP hmm. issue. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, I just wanted to clarify on the uh, additional savings that would be accrued from uh, putting the fiber in. Uh, we do have a number of uh, phone lines and T1 lines that are in place currently at the elections office. <clears throat> Those are the ones that, uh, that uh, Rich is referring to that would be turned off and uh, there is a significant savings to be had there over time. Uh, and also the uh, backup uh, equipment area, that's just a, a, a holding area to put the equipment that we already own and have in place at the North Annex. We would be moving that equipment that we currently own to that uh, location at the elections, or the uh, elections building. So that, that's to clarify a little bit on that point. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Any other questions or comments? I have then move approval of the project budget. Second. Motion made to approve the project budget by Commissioner Bueller, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item three, consent agenda. Questions or comments? None. If none, move approval. Second. Motion made to approve the consent agenda by Commissioner Bueller, seconded by Commissioner Cook. 
All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item four, new business. A county clerk number one, consider all voucher payments. Mr. Chairman, this morning we have vouchers that total 13 pages um, for $751,617.55. Of that, 70% can be made up in six expenditures, those being the Kansas Withholding Tax, the Bridge Project, our health insurance, uh, infrastructure payment for HAM construction, uh, IT manage, uh, maintenance agreement with IBM, and our workers' compensation. And I would move for approval of the expenditures. Second. Motion made to approve the vouchers as presented by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. There are no correction orders. Item B, Public Works Solid Waste. Number one, consider approval of request to waive normal bidding procedures and purchase 972 95 gallon containers from Rearig Pacific at a cost of $46,257.48 and approval of request to begin negotiations with Rearig Pacific. <laughs> Excuse me for a potential long term purchase agreement. Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Block of Public Works and Solid Waste. Uh, this is a solid waste item, and as, as you're aware, we have 41, 42,000 plus customers um, for, for a solid waste uh, department, and each customer has, by and large, one trash container and one recycling container. Therefore, we have around 80,000. 80,000 plus containers out there for our customers um, using an, an average lifespan of a cart whether it gets damaged or needs replacement or stolen we figured a, a seven to ten year lifespan for each cart that factors into being around you know seven to see, no, eight to almost 12,000 carts per year replacement to keep the inventory up to date um, so it gives you, I just gives you an idea of what, what we're looking at as far as volume might be concerned. But anyway, our inventory now is reaching a point for our trash containers, which are our black containers with the black lids, that we're getting to a point where, where um, as we do replacements and we add on new customers, our inventory is getting very low. So I'm here to request that we uh, be allowed to uh, order a couple uh, semi-loads of, of containers. Um, there are really only a few of these providers in the industry. Um, and what our, what our goal is, what I'd like to see is, is to have our containers be the same year in, year out, if at all possible, and if, if it's cost effective uh, to do so. So I went out and we reached out and, and asked the, all the different vendors to provide us quotes for um, for two truck loads or, um, of, of containers. And uh, it, as it turns out, Rary Pacific, who has provided us all our recycling carts and has provided us our last, um, our last uh, big order of trash carts was also the low uh, bidder on this particular uh, request. And which I was pleased to see because they then will have a consistent uh, container look to our container and I guess what, I, what my goal would be is is to have a container that when people see it they recognize it as Shawnee County cell waste um, so our first request is that we allow to, 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 to waive the normal bidding procedures where we would go out for bid and, and accept the four bids that we had received from the providers um, and put them on order with rare Pacific Pacific but also in an attempt to brand, I guess, for lack of a better term, the look of our containers, um, I would like to get permission to at least talk to Rarig Pacific to see if there's any kind of long-term agreement we might be able to come to regarding costs of containers to keep, the, to, keep, to keep our containers looking the same for a long period of time. They have not approached me about, about the long-term agreement. It's just something I would like to approach them about. I, whether it goes anywhere or not, I don't know. It's just... Um, I thought I'd bring it forward to, uh, for your consideration. Um, the total cost um, for this expenditure is uh, 
would be $46,257.48, and the funding would come from the Solid Waste Collections Operational Budget. So if you have questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Questions or comments? Just a brief comment. Um, Tom, when I'm looking at the breakdown between the four bids that you received, the biggest breakdown for the Rarick Pacific is the freight cost of mm -hmm. seventy-one cents because it's coming out of DeSoto. Coming out of Kansas, yes. They're the only they're the only company um, that that provides these that's, that has a facility in Kansas that I'm aware of. But yes, you're right. Freight was the, the main difference is because they're coming from DeSoto. So even though the cost of the container is a little bit higher than some of the others, because of the difference in the freight cost, I mean it's a third. Mm -hmm what the others are charging. That's correct. So, and then have we worked with this company in the past? Yes, we have. Like I said, we bought our recycling containers, we bought 45,000 carts from them. And then and prior to my coming on the cell waste department, the, the previous large purchase uh, for our trash containers came from Rare Pacific. And over, and since I've been here, we've had very, we've had a few smaller uh, purchases from them like lids and smaller containers, but yes, we've worked with them and they've been very, been very responsive uh, to our needs, been a very good company to work with. I don't have anything else. Okay. I don't either. I would move approval of the three requests within the <laughs> one item. Yeah. Second. Motion to approve by Commissioner Bueller and seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item B2, consider authorization and execution of contract C162-2014 with the Kansas Department of Transportation for the purchase of asphalt paving edging devices and associated ancillary equipment at a cost of $572.55. Uh, commissioners, that's Tom Block again with Public Works and Solid Waste. This is a public works item. Um, we've become aware of a grant program that's out there that's being offered by Kansas Department of Transportation in which they are offering uh, to pay 90% of the cost for these devices that you attach to your asphalt paving machines, which is called the safety edge shoe. And essentially what that does when you normally with our paver and, mo and, and all pavers when you, without this device, you have a just a drop off at your edge of the pavement and you either have to build it up with granular surface or some kind of shoulder. Um, what this device does, it instead of having this, the, the drop off, it, uh, it provides an edge, a sloped edge um, to the asphalt. And what that has proven to, to do is when people, if they leave the roadway and they try to correct themselves to come back on the roadway, if there is a lip, it can cause them to then overcorrect and shoot across the roadway. This allows people, if they leave the roadway, they can, they can get themselves back onto their lane or into their lane uh, much, much safer. And um, KDOT is, is such a strong advocate of this program that they are offering the 90% grant uh, funds for it to improve safety all throughout the state. Uh, I think this is an opportunity that we just really can't afford to pass on. And that's so that is the request is to enter in this, into this agreement in which we <laughs> require these and, and pay the 10% uh, um, cost. Um, I for failed. To, I forgot to list where the funding for this would come from. I propose that we would pay for this, uh, this these devices out of our special machinery uh, fund. But again, the amount's $572.55. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Questions or comments for Mr. Vlog? I would just note that I think that Stephanie helped bring this grant to our attention, or one that kind of brought re brought it up as to our attention as our grant specialist and so I think this is a great program and I would wholeheartedly uh, move for approval. I will second. I think we also had some conversation with Senator Vicki Smith as yes. well had who had forwarded yeah, some information. So there was a, a buzz about this so mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah I, think, yeah, I think we've heard it from a lot of different yeah. sources. We had also had heard about it and Stephanie you're correct. Yeah. Stephanie brought it to our attention which I appreciate because we don't always catch everything and, okay. and Senator appreciate her bringing it to our attention. Yep. Got a lot of different levels walk, watching out. Yeah. So, but good. this is really this is really a uh, a good a good thing. Good. Second. Yes. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Cook to approve the contract, and that was seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor, 
Say aye. Opposed, say no. Motion carries three Thank you. to zero. Thank you, Tom. Next item, please. Item C, Health Agency, number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C-163-2014, application to become a certified patient-centered medical home through the National Committee of Quality, uh, Committee of Quality Assurance with the $3,380 application fee to be funded through the Health Resource and Services Administration Government Recognition in Initiative or in Government Recognition Initiation Program Fund. Good morning, Commissioners. Alice Weingartner, Shawnee County Health Agency. Um, this request that's before you is to sign this agreement with NCQA for short. Um, this is an um, initiative we've been working on internally to achieve patient center medical home designation. Um, one of the main reasons we want to achieve this is because, one, it provides for a team based model of care led by personnel provider and a team who provide continuous and coordinated care throughout a patient's um, lifetime to maximize health outcomes. The significance of having this designation is it will also help us as we pursue grants in the future. Um, HRSA, who funds our 330 Community Health Center at this time, is also looking at um, giving increased funding to community health centers who have this designation. The license and the application fee will cost $3,380, and we are receiving funding from HRSA to cover that application cost. There's six standards of care that we would be working to achieve, and within each standard, there's a number of elements that we would be um, completing as well. Part of this process is accumulating the documentation that we have to submit in order to prove um, this status, that we can obtain this status. And we have a very strong team that's been working on this project, and we anticipate submitting our application by September 30th of this year. So if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Questions or comments? I do not. Do you have any other comments? Move approval. Second. Yes, Motion made to approve by Commissioner Bueller, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, Thank Alex. you, Commissioner. Next item, please. Item D, Commission Number One, consider approval of request to issue a request for proposals for security services at the Shawnee County Courthouse. Uh, I just wanted to mention that uh, I had initiated this action, this RFP. We, I know the city of Topeka, had privatized their, their facility security quite some time ago, uh, and I know we issue RFPs for a number of things. Sometimes we're successful and sometimes we're not. But I thought about this for quite a while, but what crystallized it for me was last month when the sheriff came to us and told us three things. Number one, he was understaffed. Number two, it looked like there were going to be more deputies leaving the sheriff's department. And number three, because of factors one and two, it looked like there may be a rise in the crime rate in Shawnee County. So I have uh, initiated this request for an RFP, and I'll make a motion to approve it. Commissioner, if I may. Yes, uh, please. I know that, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to really look at this until Saturday. I had the opportunity on Friday to go fly with the 190th and uh, see that, and then I made it to the Ted Inslee. Um, ceremony out at the lake so I have not had a chance to go through this with the county counselor um, the county counselor and I have not spoke about it if we could I would ask to defer this until um, Monday of next week which would be the 28th just to give me a little bit of time to well go through it uh, number one I don't think we've got a meeting oh. next Monday oh. uh, and uh, I will not be available the following Thursday so I would make it two weeks from today if that's acceptable uh, to you. Yeah. Um, I hate putting it off that long, but no. at the same time, well, uh, if that's where the how things fall. Well, it, no, it's an important issue yeah. that should not be taken lightly. It should be studied well, um, and uh, so I I don't have a problem uh, deferring for two weeks. Yes, Commissioner. That's that's fine, and I understand that. But at what point in the conversation were we going to notify the courthouse and the district attorney, or the courts, the district attorney, the sheriff's office, and those that it impacts directly? 
I understand that, that you introducing this today opens up that conversation, mm -hmm. but um, um, I, I see the sheriff waiting in the wings. I'll, I'll stop at that. Well, I <coughs> yes, Sheriff, good morning. Good morning. Herman Jones, Shawnee County Sheriff's Office here. Um, and I, I just want to, uh, again, uh, probably just reiterate the, the point that because uh, you, you bring up some good points, obviously, uh, when we're talking about uh, understaffed, and I think uh, of what you're, you're intending to do is just try and put some more deputies out there. That's right. But I would ask that uh, of this, uh, uh, of the commission as well, is to bring in those that are responsible for this, such as the sheriff's office. I think we have uh, some discussions that we have and some viewpoints on that as well as some of the other players that, that are here in the courthouse that have a role when it comes to the security of that. And I understand that probably the city has probably worked through those type of things. And so I, I also throw in that uh, the Shawnee County Sheriff's Office has different responsibilities that go for this courthouse here. Um, I, and then I also look at, uh, if we're looking at it to save costs, uh, those type of things, to look at those type of things. Uh, of venues that we have. I think we've had this conversation before and I, I'm just having some, some difficulties of trying to understand those type of things and where we're trying to move on that. But the main thing is I just want to make sure that, that the Sheriff's Office is involved in the discussion and this decision right here simply because we are responsible for that. I appreciate what you're trying to do, but at the same time I just want the communication on that. And I appreciate that, Sheriff. I, uh, from your uh, testimony last month, it, it sounded like uh, we were in dire straits. Sure. So I was, uh, I wanted to introduce this, uh, have discussion on it that it's necessary. Uh, it wouldn't be implemented for several months, but there may not be an interest in the community or, or in the state of anyone wanting to take over this responsibility. And that was just the first step sure. to see uh, vendors that may be interested. Uh, in uh, assigning this, but yeah, the, the goal is to get more boots on the ground for the sheriff's office. Well, so that if, I, if again, just yeah, one certainly. thing we also have to be mindful of, the security of the courthouse is part of this community as well. So I think that's important, putting boots as well in the courthouse and just making sure. It's just one of those type of things that we have. Yeah, we're short, but this becomes part of the responsibility of the sheriff's office. And that's the discussion we okay. need to have. Thanks, right, thank Sheriff. You. Uh, I, that would be a motion to defer until May the 5th. And I'll second that. Motion made Did by Commissioner Cook. Yes, mm -hmm. Commissioner. Mr. Chairman, I, I will note that there are a number of resolutions that are in place already that I think need to be consulted also before this RFP goes out. So um, I hope the clerk's office can make those available. And then the budgets, I think, also of, of, of those responsibilities need to be shared uh, with those who it might impact. Uh, the arresting capabilities, uh, you know, if, if, that, if that company has that, I don't think they do. I, I, there's just, it, there, it's very detailed and it's, you're right, it's not to be taken, li taken lightly. Um, but it impacts not just budgets, it impacts the um, responsibilities that we have as commissioners to make sure this courthouse is secured. So, and that's correct. Uh, <coughs> there uh, needs to be a full discussion of it. But you know, it's been my experience that the biggest roadblock to progress is the phrase "This is the way we've always done it before." So, motion made by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Archer to defer for two weeks. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item five, administrative communications. Number one, John Hunter, executive director of Heartland Visioning. Good morning, John Hunter, Heartland Visioning. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Thank you for allowing me uh, to have a moment or two of your time. and. Uh, from all of us at Heartland Visioning, we'd like to thank you for all the service you do for the county and the, the city. Uh, question, uh, I have just a little handout that I want to leave you with. Um, who do I give this to? <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go, thank you very much. My first time speaking in front of you today. 
Um, I, I do want to be brief. Um, as the new uh, executive director of Heartland Visioning, um, I have a few tasks uh, in front of me. I just want to relate a few of them to you. Um, one is uh, to communicate an understanding of where we are as a volunteer organization in our community. And I think you will all agree that if you look back to 2008, uh, this is something that really came from the citizens of Topeka Shawnee County. That's, that's where the need uh, was first understood. And so uh, it took off with, with a great deal of zest, um, some really tremendous uh, leadership, uh, Bill Moore, Dr. Jerry Farley, uh, numerous people, Roger Viola and others, um, that really got this moving. And we're very excited about that. But like any volunteer organization, you start hitting your sixth year, things start slowing down a little bit. And um, sometimes it's, it's good to have a little change so that we can um, re-energize the base, uh, ignite uh, the vision so that we can continue to move it forward because quite frankly all of us involved and I was involved uh, since 2008 the realization is we still have work in front of us and we want to continue on so communicate that uh, secondly I want to uh, go around the city reestablish a trust with the leadership both the governmental leadership our business corporate uh, to let them know that indeed there is a group of uh, wonderful group of community volunteers I call them visionary volunteers who really would like to continue to form partnerships um, throughout the city in order to bring about a, an improved quality of life for all of us. And then the third uh, task that I have before me, and it's something I'd like to achieve uh, by midsummer, uh, we had a wonderful booklet that we put out in 2008 that really outlined the concerns of the citizens. We've now spent the last nine months having community meetings all over the city. We have some 400 responses that we've already an, uh, done an analysis on. We need to merge those. We need to have a, a group of our uh, vision uh, folks get together and look at the 208 document, look at the 213 information, meld that together so that we can begin to understand what we've done, where we need to go in the future, what will be the driving projects. And once we identify the driving projects, then we can see how we can form partnerships uh, around the city. Because it is not that um, the people involved in Heartland Vision need to be in charge of uh, to simply um, form partnerships, energize, get other people to go uh, to move forward and then to uh, assist them wherever possible as part of our goals. So uh, what have we done since 2008? Um, my estimation and, and how am I feeling about this uh, in my first three weeks of this <laughs> position, we've created one heck of a network we truly, truly have. And we're talking about a network of wonderful citizens around this community who are willing to volunteer their time to work on this project. And even though we're having a transition, the people who started in 208 are still people. We can pick up the phone, call them. We'll get on their calendars. We'll get appointments with them. They'll answer questions. And they'll continue to uh, partner with us, uh, even though they may not be directly involved in the organization. They are out there, and they still have this global picture of city county and and moving this all forward so we really tr we've created a tremendous network that can work uh, with both the county commission and the city government uh, to drive things forward um, the second thing uh, that I really need to focus on uh, and that is the continuation of these very large-scale projects that we have gotten ourselves involved in uh, let me say a few words about NOTO for instance, we, we know that the, the growth that has uh, changed over there. But I, I do want to remind you that uh, Anita Walgast and myself, we, we came out of Heartland Visioning, and the request for an arts district came from the citizens of our community. Is NOTO done? No. Jim Ogle, who we all know, has stepped in to be chairman uh, of our board. Uh, Jim knows that there's additional work uh, to be done. Uh, Anita and I are, are still involved, but we've had great people. And I want to point out, uh, even Zach Sneathens, who you just had before you. Zach is a, a, a new member of our board. He replaces Vance Kelly from Trainer Architects, who worked with the city on all of our code issues that we were dealing with uh, uh, over there. So we have some really great people in place. If you look at the downtown project, Vince Fry was with Fry Allen back in, in 2008. He was a visionary volunteer. Now he's head of DTI. And we can look at Neil Dobler. Neil uh, was a part of the original group, and we know how his involvement today. Mike Morris, who stood before us many, many times trying to, 
uh, energizes, of which he does an excellent job at, uh, to keep moving things uh, forward. And last but not least, uh, Beth Fager. What an addition to our community. We should all be so honored. Uh, the wor work that she did going back with TPAC, now the Great Overland Station, and now she chairs the Riverfront Authority. Beth was a part of Heartland Visioning from the beginning. So you really do have Heartland Visioning leaders who are driving these three major projects in addition to other service that we do. And then the last thing uh, that I want to point out is um, we have just brought on 20 new members to our community um, organization, our steering committee. Well, we have to find ways to integrate those people. Susan Duffy with transportation, obviously an important person in our community, and uh, transportation was one of our 213 concerns. We want to find out how we can work with her on what are the issues, how can we move uh, some things forward. So taking people like uh, Nancy Johnson, Barry Feeker, uh, and, and move those people into a collaborative uh, mentoring, if you will, of our new membership, and uh, making sure that by uh, mid to late summer, uh, we have our organization all moving forward in the right direction. And again, review, revise, refocus uh, our goals, where we want to go, and to reestablish uh, the partnerships uh, with the governmental leaders of this community because truly um, that's how we're going to get things done. And we're going to come forward and we're going to say, how can we help you? How can we put together important, influential leaders in this community, how can we put their efforts to help support the efforts, your vision, as you move uh, the uh, county and city forward. So we're really excited about these opportunities to work with you. I am certainly honored uh, to be in this position, and I hope that I will have in the future uh, a number of opportunities to come before you and share with you uh, the important work that I feel we're all doing in Heartland Visioning. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, John. And, and I wanted to say that uh, John is uniquely qualified to, to reinvigorate Heartland Visioning. Um, he is um, a co-author of one of the biggest success stories that we've got in, in Topeka and Shawnee County, and that's the Noto District. Um, it's just a job well done. So I wish you uh, success in, in Heartland Visioning. I'm, and I'm confident you'll do well. In the Thank position. you so very much. I really appreciate you it. Bet. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, John. Any other administrative communications? <coughs> Commissioner, I yes. did comment earlier that I, on Friday, had the opportunity to fly with the 190th. Um, that was a fantastic opportunity. I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity. But I think more important is the impact that the 190th has in Topeka and Shawnee County and that they constitute a $75 million impact in that base alone with the jobs, with the personnel, with the people that are there. One of the things that they stressed at the base was family, having family activities and making sure that they are deeply invested in the community. And uh, I think that you know, Topeka and Shawnee County is very blessed to have them here. And, and like I said, I hope that we have to keep them for a very, very long time and add more tankers to them. Just wanted to communicate that back, what an impact they have in the community. Thank you, Commissioner. Did they issue you a parachute before you went up? <laughs> Actually, uh, the 190th no longer carries parachutes. Uh, an accountant found that uh, they were um, added weight and, you know, they could haul more fuel if they didn't have the parachutes. And besides, they'd never used them before, so, I mean, they didn't need them. And I wish I was joking. I felt, I felt very safe once I was back on the ground. <laughs> Those darn accountants, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Commissioner, uh, hey, anything? Uh, just, uh, Commissioner Cook did mention that he and I had the opportunity to attend um, the Friends of the Ted Inslee Gardens, the unveiling of a, a wall that they are mm -hmm. going to be constructing out there to commemorate those who, who donate to the Ted Inslee Gardens. And former Commissioner Ted Inslee was there and his family, so it was, it was a very nice event. So my appreciation to Parks and Recreation. I don't see any of them here this morning, but it, it was a very nice event. Thank you. Um, next item. Item 6, Executive Session. Uh, motion made to go into Executive Session uh, for a period not to exceed 10 minutes. Uh, discussion will be uh, preliminary discussions relating to the acquisition of real property. 
Can that, we, that is a motion. Commissioner, can we add to that non-elected personnel and attorney-client relationship? Just in an abundance of caution. Absolutely. Uh, did you want to extend the time? No. I don't think we need to. It's a lot to cover in 10 minutes, but let's try a uh, motion made by Commissioner Archer, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries three to zero. We are in executive session.